Hi everyone, Anthony Morganti here. Several years ago, I did a very popular series of videos on YouTube called Lightroom Quick Tips. In each of those videos, I gave a single quick tip on using Lightroom Classic. Well, over the years, Lightroom Classic has changed quite a bit, rendering a lot of those older videos obsolete. I was thinking of reviving the series, but what I've decided to do instead is a series of videos where in each video, I'll give multiple tips on not only Lightroom Classic, but the cloud version of Lightroom and the mobile version of Lightroom as well. In each of the videos, I'll give three, four, maybe five different tips on using Lightroom. In today's video, I'm going to give you four different tips on using Lightroom Classic. Our first tip has to do with black and white. Often when you edit an image in Lightroom, black and white or color, you want to see a before after. And there's a couple different ways you could do that. You could just hit the Y key and get a before after, or you could hit the backslash key and get a before and an after. Either way, your before is going to be color because you probably shot in color with your digital camera. Well, when you're editing in black and white, sometimes that before in color doesn't really help you see what you've done with your processing. It might be more beneficial to you to see the before in black and white. Well, you actually could do that. What you need to do is go to the develop module of Lightroom, then go over to left hand panel and open up the history tab and just go to the point in history where you converted the image to black and white. You could see after I imported the image, the first thing I did was convert this image to black and white. I'd like this to be my before step. To do that, again, go to the history tab, hover over the convert to black and white line, then right click on it, and then just go in this little menu to copy history step settings to before. Once you do that, if you hit the Y key, your before will be that step. This is the black and white image. There's my after on the right, or if I hit that backslash key, there's before, there's after. Sometimes, as I mentioned, seeing the black and white version of the image as your before just helps you see what you've done with your processing. Maybe we'll give you an idea what you missed or what you want to redo before, after. All right, our next tip has to do with an image, uh, architectural image. Now, it could be the outside of a building like I have here, or it could be the inside of a room. Often, if you shoot with a wide-angle lens, you'll induce some distortion into the image where your verticals aren't really vertical and your horizontals aren't really horizontal. In this case, uh, it looks like the building's falling backwards. Now, of course, you could just go to the Transform tab and click on Auto. And a lot of times that will work, and it did okay here. It's still falling back just slightly. I'm going to undo that by hitting Command-Z on my Mac, Control-Z on a PC. What I prefer to do is use the Guided Upright Adjustment. It may look a little confusing to use, but it's actually super easy. To use the guided upright adjustment, just click on the tool. It's right here. And when you do that, you'll have the tool and you'll have a little loop. It's a little magnifier. Now, if you don't see that little magnifier, go down to the toolbar. The toolbar is this little strip of real estate that's directly below the image and above the film strip. Here, you'll see show loop. Make sure that's checked. If it's not checked, you won't see the loop. You need the loop because it really helps you draw your lines. More specifically, you'll need two horizontal lines and two vertical lines. And what you want to look for is something in the scene that it should be perfectly horizontal and something in the scene that should be perfectly vertical. And you want your two lines to be as far apart from one another as possible. Um, now, for example, I have this image here. We have these steps. There's a lot of horizontal lines here. And then we have like at the top of the building. There's a horizontal line up here. There's a horizontal line here. And I'd like the two horizontal lines to be as far apart from one another as possible. So what I'll do is I'll go to the very bottom step and I'll use the loop to help me find the area right where that bottom step starts on the ground. And I'll just click with the left mouse button and hold the left mouse button and and drag to the other side, and then just draw this perfectly horizontal line across the bottom of this stair. Now, when you do that, you'll have that line sitting there. Nothing happened. What you need to do now is find a horizontal line in the scene that is a far, far away from this as possible. Now, I could go up here, 
but I think what I'll do is instead I want this longer one. So I'm going to go to the top of the building here and try to find the edge of the ledge, like right there. Click with the left mouse button, hold that button in, go to the other side and go right to the top of that or lip of that ledge right there and let go. And you can see that it kind of straightened the image a little bit and kind of made it a little more square to the camera. Now it's still falling backwards. This is where the vertical lines come in. Now there's really, there's strong verticals like on each of the windows. There's also this corner here and this corner over here, and those are pretty far apart from one another. So that's what I'm going to use. I'm going to try to just use the loop and get my cursor right in that little corner, perfectly in the corner, click and hold, go up to the top and find that corner again and let go. Now you'll see it kind of straightened out the left side, but our right side is still off. So we'll do the same thing. We'll go to this corner here, click and hold, go to the top. You right here would be better and let go. And now you'll see that it's straight in the building. It's perfectly like standing straight up and it's perfectly square to the camera. Now, if you think you've made a mistake, what you could come do is you, you can do is you could come in and grab these little handles and tweak things a little bit just to make sure that you're right where you need to be. So you can see there's little handles on each of the lines. And when you're done, you're satisfied, you have it upright as you want just put the tool away over here by clicking right in that area there and you've just put the tool away and again this works on interiors too so if you shot a room and used a wide angle lens and uh, you know your verticals aren't vertical and horizontals aren't horizontal and things may be bent a little bit uh, use the guided upright tool it really does work well now my next tip has to do with images that you have either drastically underexposed or drastically overexposed uh, for example, I have this image here. You can see it's drastically underexposed. It's an unedited RAW file. Whenever I have an image and I made a mistake for whatever reason, and it happens to be drastically underexposed, what I immediately do, the first thing I do, is I go to the Basic tab, and I take highlights all the way down and shadows all the way up. I don't even look at the image. I just move those sliders like I mentioned. Then what I do is I go to the Exposure slider, and I look at the image and move the exposure slider to the right till I think it's properly exposed. And I think it's properly exposed right about there. Then I'll get white, a white and black point. There's a number of different ways to do that. I'll probably cover that in a future tip someday. But the way I like to do it is I like to hold the option key in on my Mac. It's an alt key on a PC. Hold that key in while moving the white slider to the right. When I click on the white slider, I'll get a black screen as I start to move it to the right start to see some color come through. That means I'm starting to clip the highlights. Of course, the sun is right there. That's why I'm clipping it right there. Just back it off till all that color dissipates or most of the color dissipates. That's a pretty good white point. I'll do the same thing for blacks. Let's move that to left. This time though, I get a white screen. You'll see I got color coming through. I don't mind crushing the shadows a little bit, but that's what I do whenever I have an image that is drastically underexposed such as this. Now I'll just continue with my processing, but it gets me in a good spot and I'll be able to get a good edit out of this. It works also for images that are drastically overexposed, although you don't have as much latitude with an overexposed image. When you're shooting digitally, there's just not as much space up there in the highlights. Uh, so you'll tend to blow out the highlights a lot sooner than you'll crush the shadows. But it still works with a lot of images. For example, this image is drastically overexposed. Again, I'll just come in, highlights all the way down, shadows all the way up, exactly like I did with the previous image. Then I'll go to the exposure slider, I'll look at the image, but I'll move the exposure slider to the left. And I'll just keep moving it until it looks like the image is properly exposed. Then I'll get a white and black point the same way I usually do, holding the Option or Alt key, and the black point there. And that looks pretty good. Now that gave me a good starting point. Now I could continue on with my editing from this point forward. Now my last tip has to do with crooked images. Um, there's a number of different ways to straighten an image in Lightroom and a lot of the auto methods work great. I mean you could just go for example with this image which obviously is crooked. I could go to the crop tool and just click on auto right and that pretty much straightened it. Uh, but I'm going to reset that. Um, sometimes though that auto adjustment 
doesn't work well. It just won't straighten the image properly. If that happens to you, grab this level tool. You can see it's called the straighten tool specifically. Click on that and your cursor turns into an actual level. And what you do here is you just kind of line up this little plus sign to something that should be perfectly horizontal or perfectly vertical in the real scene. For example, we know in this scene, right, that horizon line should be perfectly horizontal. So we'll just click on the left side, drag across to the other side. You can see while I'm holding in the left mouse button, I'm getting a perfect, I'm getting a line. And I just drag across to the other side. And when I'm satisfied that I have it right along that horizontal, let go and it straightens the image. And if you need to touch it up a little bit as well, you could just come off the image a little bit and just click. And you could see that you get this tight grid. And the tight grid looks like it is straight. It looks pretty good. And then when you're done, just close the crop tool. Now, there are some instances where you won't have a real discernible horizontal. For example, this image here, we do have the trees in the background, but this, uh, there's not really a good horizontal line there. I don't think the tree bottom or the shoreline across is perfectly horizontal. I think there's some points that are further out, some points that are further back top of the tree line isn't going to work. But we do have a vertical here. It's kind of not maybe as discernible as previous as the previous horizontal was in the, in the previous image. But you can see there's kind of a vertical right here. Uh, we could use that. So we'll go to the crop tool. Again, we'll get the straighten tool. And we'll come in here. We'll try to find this kind of like line. And then just draw down from that line and let go. And hopefully that straightened it. And yeah, it did pretty good. So that's what I do when that auto doesn't work is I'll use that straighten tool to straighten an image. So that's four tips for Lightroom Classic. I think in my next video in this series, I'll give you a number of tips for using the cloud version of Lightroom. And you know, it'll be haphazard. Uh, one video might do Lightroom Classic, another one will do the mobile version, and then the next three will do the cloud version. Who knows? Uh, it's just going to play up by ear as I think of them. Thank you, everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon.